Okay, so last time we discussed the two independent sample t tests. Let's let me just give you a little review about this. When you say t test, it's a parametric test. So all the types of t test, including the paired t test, are parametric test, which means that we need to satisfy assumptions first before we can really use this. Okay. Uh, what are the assumptions that you need to meet before using parametric tests? Number one, the data set should be normally distributed. So if you are going to make a graph or you are going to test for normality of distribution, kailangan um, normal talaga, no? you will have a bell shape for a graph. And then um, there will be no outliers. When you say outliers, these are extreme values. Therefore, um, in parametric test standard deviations are very important since that one measures the precision of our data. Meaning if you have 100 of data, uh, they have to be close with, close with each other or even close to the mean. Because, for example, if you have an exam, if you give an exam to your respondents that is over 100, um, if you have scores na more on sa 80 to 100, and then you have two or three persons na ang score ay 10 lang, then that will be called extreme values, and that will be affecting the normality of the distribution. And if that is the case, you cannot use the two independent sample t-test or the paired t-test. Kasi nga, number one requirement for the parametric test, normality of distribution. And then for the two independent sample t-test also, there should be equal variances. Since we have two groups here being compared, they should have equal variance. Remember when you say variance, it's the square of the standard deviation. So that one also measures precision of our data. At the same time, we only use parametric tests if we have real numbers or continuous data. Meaning we cannot use the parametric tests like the t-test and the ANOVA or even the Pearson R if we only have either nominal or ordinal data. So do not forget that ha, nominal data yung my classification, just like the demographic profile. Like, like when you say um, sex, that is just male and female and then we don't have numerical data for that. And then for ordinal data also, though we have numerical data there, but the numerical data is just used for ranking or for giving order or for uh, yung, ano, yung like sa Likert scale. Now we have numerical data to represent um, the verbal interpretations. However, if even if you use um, the Likert scale in your questionnaire, but at the end of the day, you're going to, ano, to get the mean of all the questions in your questionnaire uh, that can still be considered real numbers or continuous data. So you can still use parametric tests for that. Okay? Now, do not forget two independent sample t-test is used to compare two groups. So two groups only, ha? and then if you look at the SOP for this, uh, this will ask if there is a significant difference between that two groups class. Okay, That's when we use the independent sample t-test. And then do not ever forget our decision rule, ha? our decision rule. Since we are doing software application, we are not doing manual computation for this, then we are going to um, use the p-value to come up with a decision. So do not forget ha, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, you have to reject your null hypothesis. I said that means that there is a significant difference between the two groups. Otherwise, if 
the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that's that time you accept your null hypothesis. There is no significant difference between the two groups being compared. So yung pinaka-importante sa lahat, after um, using the software, you just look at the p-values. Okay? Um, what else do you need to know? Uh, another thing, uh, for example, um, wait lang ha kung, ayan, ito yung mga assumptions, di ba, for, for the parametric test. Na mention ko to kanina, normality of distribution, equality of variance, independence of observations. This is just applicable for the independent sample t-test kasi the groups should be independent from each other. Um, hindi dapat sila related. Example, you have the positive control and then the experimental group. So they are not related because these are two chemical substances. So yun, uh, no, no outliers, random sampling, and then the independent variable should be uh, groupings. So yeah, like male and female, and then whether then positive control experimental group group siya matatawag ang independent variable pero you have to take note that the dependent variable should at least be interval an interval type of data now um, ang question ngayon paano kung hindi natin masatisfy itong mga assumptions na ito meaning your collected data may not be normally distributed or you don't have real numbers or continuous data in your dependent variable. That's the time you have to use the non-parametric equivalent. Okay, meron tayong, meron tayong test na equivalent nito. For independent sample t-test, the non-parametric equivalent is the man with me test. Do not forget that, ha? Huh? The non-parametric equivalent of our independent sample t-test is the man with me test. And how are you going to do that in the software? Let me share the just. And then let me open yung data pa rin na ginamit natin last time. Wait lang, ha? Let me check if nandito siya. Um, independent sample. Yeah, I think this is it. Ito yung sample na ginamit natin last time. The SOP for this is, is there a significant difference uh, in the level of awareness between the male and the female pharmacist on antimicrobial dispensing? So, di ba, pag mag -t 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 tayo, we have to make sure first na tama yung labeling ng ating data. I-click natin ito. And yes, tama na ka-nominal. Kasi, di ba, sex is a nominal type of data. Wala siyang numerical value. Instead, you only have classification. But for the level of awareness, this is also correct. It's a scale type of data. It's interval real numbers. But as you can see, actually, uh, if you look at the questionnaire for this, naka Likert scale ito. Kaya nga 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lang yung makukuha na, na data. 5 yung pinakamalaki. However, since the questionnaires, the questionnaire for this has lots of questions and then at the end, nagkuha siya ng mean. Actually, mean na ito ng lahat ng sagot ng mga respondents. So, it is considered already as a scale type of data. Therefore, we can always use t-test here. Pero let's check. Ulitin ko lang siya. So, you have to click independent sample t-test. Independent kasi nga naman, the two groups are independent from each other. And then again, the... The dependent variable should be placed here under the variables na box. But itong track, which is um, the male or female, is the grouping variable or our independent variable. Okay? And then you just have to wait for the table to be completed. And then again, in coming up with a decision, we are going to use the p-value. So please review our decision rule here. 
na kaila na kapag uh, this is 0.974 so that's that's greater than 0.05 which which means you have to accept your null hypothesis which states that there is no significant difference sa level ng awareness ng male and female pharmacist in this case. And then again, remember, if you want to see the descriptives, just click descriptives here. You have here the male and the female, and it will give you automatically the mean and the standard deviation, which are required also in the table in the findings of your study. And then ito yung mga normality checks. You can just click everything, the two of that, normality and equality of variance, just to check if you have... Um, met the assumptions for parametric test. But take note that you don't need to include this in your paper. Okay? Hindi mo na ito kailangan i-include sa paper nyo itong test for normality and the equality of variance. Pero, di ba, our decision rule here, if the p-value for the for the normality, test for no normality, Shapiro-Wilk, if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then yes, there is normality of distribution. So just like this one, uh, for both groups, you have 0 0.318 and 0 0.390, which, which are greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, we can conclude that the data sets here are normally distributed. So yes, pwedeng gamitin si p-test. For the test for the equality of variance, kung pareho ba yung kanilang variances ng both groups, ganun pa rin. If the p-value if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then you can say that yes, there is equal variances for the two groups. Okay, yun yung decision rule natin. But then again, let me remind you, you don't need to include these tables in your paper. Actually, the test for equality, yes, you can include that sa table ninyo for just for the panel to see na, na you have you have uh, met the assumption for the test for the equality of variances. Pwede ito, pero itong Shapiro will no need na. Now, ano, um, ano nga ito? Yung question lang, um, example lang ito ha, example lang. Paano kung hindi normally distributed, hindi equal yung variances? So again, you cannot use the t-test. Therefore, we are going to use the man with me. So paano siya gagawin in the in the just, just unclick the student kasi the student here on the left side is referring to the independent sample t-test. And click the man with me. Okay, click the man with me. Again, this is the non-parametric equivalent of our independent sample t-test. Okay? So, pero yung decision rule natin class parehos, pareha pa rin. You will all uh, you will also look at the p-value and uh, ganun pa rin if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 you have to reject the null hypothesis because there is a significant difference between the two groups or if it is greater just like this one the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 then we are accepting the null hypothesis there is no significant difference between the two groups. Okay? Any question about this? Uh, may gusto kayong itanong about the independent sample t-test. Just a review, ha? It's just a review kasi uh, baka nakalimutan na and baka may grupo dito nagagamit ng independent sample t-test. Kapag kawala, let's move on to the paired t-test. So this one naman is the dependent sample t-test or the paired t-test. Paired sample t-test. Now just like the independent sample t-test, this is still a parametric test, meaning we have to satisfy assumptions first before we can use this test. Now, 
Um, this is also the same with the independent sample t-test that we are comparing two groups. Okay? We are comparing two groups only. Kasi pag two groups na, hindi na pwede si t-test. ANOVA na yun. Uh, so look at your SOP. If you have questions asking for, as for the significant difference, you might be using t-test but you have to look at first kung ilang grupo yung i-compare ninyo. If dalawa lang, then yes, it can be independent sample t-test or paired sample t-test. Pag, pag more than two, ANOVA na yun siya. Class, ha? Now again, Anong kaibahan ni per t-test kay independent sample t-test? Yung sa independent sample t-test from the word independent, the two groups being compared here are independent from each other, meaning they are not related. You have two groups that are completely different from each other, like yung sa male and female, yung respondents mo sa male, iba yung... I mean, wala, it has nothing to do with your respondents na mga female. So, ibang tao yun sila. Pero pag sa pair t-test kasi, actually, you have one group of respondents or participants or subjects, kung animal animals man yan sa laboratory, isang grupo lang sila. But you are going to get two measurements here. Okay? So, ito yung mga... SOP is asking for the significant difference before and after giving a certain intervention. So pag may mga questions kayo dyan na, is there a significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test? Diba? Example, um, like sa drugs for diabetes. Example, nag-check kayo ng blood sugar level of your subject subjects before giving the drug. So that's pre-test. Ang tawag dyan ay pre-test or before giving the drug. Now, after that, you give the intervention and then after nag-test ka na naman ng blood sugar. So that's the time we call it post-test. Okay? Post-test na yun siya or after giving the intervention. So again, that's pre-test and post-test. And if you want to see if ever there is a difference between the scores or between the data sa after, before and after na measurements, paired t-test yun. Kasi related sila with each other. Naka-pair yun before and after nila na scores. So yun yung difference now ni independent sample t-test and ni paired t-test. I will no longer require you to do the manual computation. We are done with this in your statistics. But please take note that we have the same decision rule for this with that of the independent sample t-test. We will still look at the p-value. If it is less than 0.05, then you have to reject the null hypothesis because there is a significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test na scores. Or if it is greater than 0.05, that's the time you accept the null hypothesis. So we have here the example um, the, the PPHA Davao chapter conducted a research training to research professors. So the objective of the training here is to increase the level of competence of um, the research professor. Oh, okay, the difference between the independent and the paired. Ang independent, again, you are comparing two groups that are independent from each other. So kagaya na example natin last time, we are comparing the level of awareness of the male and the female to pharmacist. So you have completely uh, independent groups. They are completely independent from each other. Iba yung babae, iba yung lalaki. The answers ng mga lalaki have nothing to do with the answers ng mga female. Pero we are comparing their scores sa questionnaire. Pag paired t-test, you, you have one group of participant or respondent or subject, kung ano man ang tawag natin sa kanila. Respondents kasi, di ba, pag you have the questionnaires. 
pero subjects kung experimental. So you have, example ko kanina, meron ka lang isang grupo ng subject, for example, ng animals, and but you have two measurements. So mahuhulog siyang two groups. And ito yung mga before and after na testing. So one, one, again, one subject pero two measurements for the paired t-test. Yun ang kaiba, kaibahan nila. So paired siya kasi the same subject ang kinuhanan mo ng score. Kaya lang dalawa kasi before giving the treatment or the intervention and then after giving the intervention. Ayun yung kaibahan nilang dalawa. Now, moving on with the example, again, we have here research training for research professors which aim to increase the level of their research competence. Now, they have here the adapted questionnaire uh, which was used to measure the competence of the research professors before and after the training. So, meaning... Um, meaning plus, we have one set of participants, but we have two measurements. Their level of competence before the training and their level of competence after the training. So, dalawang measurements ito. Kaya if we look at the conceptual framework, you have here the independent variable, which are their which are the groupings of the scores before the training and after the training. And then our outcome variable here is their level of competence. So this is actually a non-experimental descriptive comparative na study. Uh, non-experimental because we're not doing an experiment here, but we are comparing their level of competence. So meron tayong research or practice. SOP is asking for the level of competence first for the, uh, before the training and then yung level of competence nila after the training. And then syempre, we have a question here. Is there a significant difference in the level of research competence of the research professors before and after the training? So, fair t-test talaga ito ha kasi the two measurements are done in the same participants. So if we are going to uh, look at the JAS, kung paano natin gagawin si JAS ha, but before that, let me show you the scores first. These are hypothetical scores. Hypothetical scores, ito ha. Wait lang, tagal naman na open. Ayan. Ayan. So before using the JUST software, you have to encode first your collected data in an Excel. So this is how it looks like. We have 15 participants in the training. And ito yung mga scores nila. Ito ang score ni, particip, uh, ni respondent number one before the training. And ito yung score niya after the training. So it's paired t-test, paired measurements. Hindi pwede class na ito yung score ni respondent number one before the training tapos yung kanyang score sa after the training dito mo ilalagay sa baba. Hindi pwede. Kailangan magka-pair talaga yan sila. Kung ito yung kay respondent number one, dapat score. Sorry, score niya din ito after the training. Yeah, pair t-test ang tawag. And then do not forget that just cannot read Excel format na um, file. So do not forget class to save your file in CSV format. Basta nagsige mo navigate sa inyong hang just software. Tapos dili ninyo siya makita kay wala dahil siya naka. Take note of this, save as, type CSV. Yan lang yung mababasa ng ating JASP. Okay? Now, moving on sa JASP software natin. This is how you are going to do the paired t-test. So, always start here on the upper left side corner and then look for your file. I place that one under Research Capability Building. And that was named as research competence. So take note 
ayan o, ang, ang nakikita niya lang na file is yung nakakama delimited or the CSV format. So open that and then automatically all the data will be imported. But uh, let's try to check first if tama yung data. Actually, itong respondent, hindi yan siya tama kasi hindi naman yan siya scale na data. Respondent number one, number two, number three naman yan. So that is a nominal data actually. Hindi yan siya real numbers ha. That is just used to identify the respondents. Pero itong before and after, tama na yan siya. Nakascale silang dalawa because these are real numbers coming from the scores of the participants sa questionnaire. Now, since we are comparing, then we are going to do the t-test. So click t-test here sa, sa taas. And then again, Paired t-test ang gagawin natin. So, click paired sample t-test. Okay? I hope nasundan pa. And then, next. Ano ba yung pairing natin before? So, transfer it here. We only have one box kasi nga pair silang dalawa. And then, transfer the after also. And then, wait for the table. Okay, so meron tayong measure number one, that's before the test. Measure number two, that's after the test. And then what we are looking here for the decision is still the p-value. And the same decision rule. Ano yung p-value natin? Less than 0.001. What do you think? Are we going to accept? Or reject the null hypothesis. Sige daw, kung nasundan yung ating discussion, based on the p-value, less than 0.001, so maybe it's a very small number. So ano ba? Accept or reject the null hypothesis? Okay, very good. We have to reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is a significant difference between the level of competence of the professors before and after the training. Again, meron daw significant difference yung level of competence ng mga professors. Okay, so how do you know the, lab, uh, the, the difference? Click the descriptives and look at the mean. Before, ang mean ng scores nila is 19.7 and after, ang mean ay naging 20.793. So there is an increase in their scores and the difference is significant. Significant, sorry. Which means na yes, um, the given training actually increased the, the level of competence of the research professor. So that's how you discuss the result of this study. Look at the p-value. So there is a significant difference. And look at the mean if ano yung um, direction ng difference. And yes, you can see in the mean that after the scores after the training are really greater than the scores before the training. So you can conclude na the given training really increased the competence of the professors. Now, if you want to check if, if you have met the assumption for the normality of distribution, you can also do the shapiro wheel test here. So just click here on the left side, normality for under the assumption checks, and still look at the p-value, and meron pa rin tayong the same decision rule here. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, yes, the data sets are normally distributed. So yun yung um, ibig sabihin niyan. That's 0.847. So that's really greater than 0.05. So pwede talagang gamitin si paired sample test here. So, tama siya. Pero ano lang, example lang. For example, hindi na satisfy yung normality of distribution o kaya 
hindi real numbers ang inyong dependent variables. Inyong mga scores dyan, hindi real numbers, naka-nominal lang or naka-ordinal. Siyempre, hindi mo pwede gamitin si parity test. Student ang nakalagay dyan for the parity test. Ha? And take note of the non-parametric equivalent of the parity test. It's called Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. Again, that's the name of the non-parametric equivalent of the pair D test. Again, it's Wilcoxon signed rank test. But sa table, i-click na nako na ha. Ito na yung bagong table. Uh, you, you will still look at the p-value. And we have the same decision rule also. Even if naka-Wilcoxon signed rank test yan, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, you have to reject still the null hypothesis. So, binago lang natin ang test kasi nga hindi applicable si paired p-test. So, yun yung gagawin natin sa study ninyo. If ever, sa study ninyo, you are comparing two groups. Meron ba ditong gagamit ng p-test or wala? Any p-test, independent sample p-test or paired p-test? Meron ba? Kasi hindi ko memorize yung inyong study. Wala. Wala. Wala yung nangutahin na din. Is there a significant difference sa ilahang research? Or meron naman pero hindi two groups. Pag hindi two groups class, uh, that's the time we will be using the ANOVA. Okay? So, as... As I said a while ago, since I'm doing a parallel discussion with the medtech group, then I will not be discussing ANOVA today because I was not able to finish this one yesterday since we only have one hour for the class. So next week, we will be talking about ANOVA and how to do it in the JASP, how to encode your results in the... Excel, in, in Microsoft Excel, ituturo ko yan sa inyo lahat. Yung mga assumptions that you need to consider kasi ANOVA, just like the t-test is a parametric test. So kailangan again, meron kayong i-satisfy na assumptions. I have the list here. And then again, I'll give you an example. And then after the ANOVA, sisingit ko yung discussion section of the paper. Paano nyo gagawin? Kasi I'm done discussing the result section. So ang next na, ang last part will be the discussion section. And then after discussing, we will now talk about correlation. Okay. This will be after the ANOVA and the discussion. So sa correlation, I'll be teaching you how to do the software uh, computation for the Pearson correlation for those who, who has, is there a significant relationship in their SOP. Pero take note that Pearson correlation is also a parametric test. So meron din itong assumptions like this one that need to be met first before really using the Pearson. Pag hindi, hindi na satisfy yung mga assumptions na yan. Um, wait lang ha, let me see if I have the Pearson here. I don't have the Pearson. But please just take note, uh, this one, that the non-parametric equivalent of the Pearson R is called the Spearman's raw correlation. So yun, we discussed din natin yan. And then let me see. Uh, I'll skip the sample size. You know this already. You have computed the sample size na. Uh, this one is for the reliability. Sino yung nag-pilot testing dito? May nag-pilot testing ba? Nag-compute kayo ng Cronbox Alpha sa ano, pilot testing ninyo. Or walang nag-pilot testing dito. Um, itong Cronbox Alpha kasi ginagamit siya to check if your questionnaire is really reliable or not. Kung nagsuggest ang panel na mag-pilot testing kayo, kailangan makikita din ito sa paper ninyo, ang result ng Cronbox Alpha. Na ma 
meron talaga tayong conclusion there na based on the Cronbox Alpha, your questionnaire, your questionnaires are really reliable. Okay, so I think that's it. If I still have time left, maybe I can discuss also the regression analysis in the chi-square. Ano daw? Um, hello, uh, ano daw? Entrance exam result, academic performance, and board. Ano yung SOP ninyo? Pasend daw ng SOP. I cannot... I cannot decide if I don't see your SOP ng good. Let's wait for their SOP. Ah! Nandahang. Validators ang nagsabi na mag-file testing. Yeah. Kailangan din yun sa paper ninyo. You can, you can place that one sa appendices. So, ano yung result ng pilot testing ninyo? Reliable ang questionnaire ninyo? Sino nag-stat nun? May nag-stat? Sa ano? Ah, nag-stat kayo. Anong ginamit nyo sa statistics nun? Just gi-encode. Hindi ba tayo nag-encode sa just? Nag-encode tayo sa ano man. Nalibog. Ah, okay, gamit mo pang solve is ang just. Ano specific test ang ginamit mo? Bakit ka ng Pearson? Hindi ba natin ginagamit ang Pearson correlation for the test of reliability? Ang purpose ng pilot testing actually is to test for the reliability of your questionnaires. And ang Pearson, ginagamit lang naman siya to test the significant relationship. Pero hindi mo kasi siya magagamit kung reliability yung pinag-uusapan. So, nangyari <laughs> doon. You have to do the Cronbox Alpha for the test for the reliability if pilot testing ang pinag-uusapan natin. Ano na nangyari doon? Paano tayo ngayon makakonclude na ano na reliable talaga ang questionnaire niyo or hindi? Hindi yun siya pwede. You have to repeat that and you have to do the Cronbox Alpha na testing. Though you can also do that sa just Sa reliability, um, test for reliability. Wait lang. I'll give you a copy of this PowerPoint and you may navigate this paano. But check yung part ng reliability testing. Ah, nasa descriptives kasi yung reliability analysis. And ito siya oh. Latag nyo muna sa 
ano, asan na nga yun? <laughs> Ito pala. Ayan. Ilatag nyo muna sa Excel yung inyong results. Okay? Ilakabuok inyong hang participants sa pilot testing. Example, 10 or 30. Latag nyo muna siya like this, ha? Sa Excel muna, syempre, kasi hindi yan, yan mai-import. Okay, 10 lang. So, for example, 10. And then, respondent 1 to 10. And then, meron kang item number 1, 2, or depende kung ilang questions ni dyan sa sa questionnaire ninyo. And then, ito yung mga answers nila sa ano, sa sa pilot testing ng questionnaire ninyo. Tapos, save nyo as CSV. Kasi, syempre, hindi yan siya mababasa ng JASP. Pag, pag okay na, na-encode nyo na lahat from items number one hang pila ka items na inyong questions din ha. I-import nyo siya sa JASP so it will look like this. Example lang ito ha. Kasi 30 at ay 25 pala ito. Tapos saan natin makikita yung reliability testing dito sa descriptives. So look at the JASP. Sa, sa descriptives mismo, sa tabi ng t-test, pag i-click mo yan, you will see under the descriptive statistics, reliability analysis. So i-click nyo yung reliability analysis na yan. And then we have here, ito yung respondent, di ba? Kasi di ba respondent number 1 to 25 ito. And yung lahat ng items, ilipat nyo dito sa variables kung pila man nakabuok inyong items. Okay? And then, i-click nyo yung McDonald's Gamma and the Cronbox Alpha. Unstandardized ha? Kasi unstandardized pa inyong questionnaire. Tapos, ibibigay ito ng just scale reliability statistics. So, magbibigay yan siya netong mga values na ito, both the McDonald's and the Cronbox. Okay? So, ito na yon scale reliability statistics. Wait lang. Ay, wala dito yung, yung analysis of the result. Hindi pala nasama sa slide. Yung, yung Cronbox Alpha yung ating gagamitin kasi yan yung um, test 3 test na reliability kasi. Wait, uh, punapin ko yung... Punapin ko yung reporting nito. Ayan. Nakalagay dyan. One box alpha. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, I just want to definite the table. Sige, ilatag niyo muna ano, Rosalie. Tapos, i-check niyo yung Cronbox Alpha na value. And then, dito ko na lang muna siya sa Google Chrome kasi mahirapan ako maghanap nito sa kadami ko ng slides. Saan na yun? Kasi ang alam ko dito, the larger the, um, the, larger the Cronbox Alpha, the reliable your test, uh, your questionnaire is
Okay, so kung kung mag ano man gud siya i send na ko ang interpretation sa ano ha sa group chat na lang natin si pangalan sa tong group chat makalimot na ko BS PH ay PH3 ay PH3 Okay. <laughs> Ayan yung interpretation ha sa Cronbox Alpha lang. Yung sa ni McDonald's. Cronbox na lang. Ma'am? Yes. Yung uh, part, di ba, ilagay mo siya sa appendices po. Yung nasa just po, yung ilagay namin na mga result niya po. Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh, oh, oh. Ito, this table. Yes, ma'am. Thank you pa. <laughs> ah, wait. <laughs> Okay na? Yes, ma'am. Ginag-send na dahil sila ng SOP. Mag-read sa ako. Ipagkita na kay Mama Ben yung result, ha? Si Mama Ben yung hang ano, no? Advisor? Ano ba? Hindi ko sure. Si Mama Ben. Sige. What is the mean admission score? What is the mean academic performance? Is there a significant relationship between the admission scores and their overall rating? Is there a significant relationship? Ah, oh, Pearson R. Pearson R ni siya, ano? Kita ni nag-chat. Si Hershey, ne? Nakita naman. Oo, si Hershey. Here's an R, kasi yung scores nila sa admission, real numbers naman yun, interval din ang scale, tapos ang scores nila sa board exam and even their academic performance, real numbers din yun. So you are um, getting the relationship. So here's an R. Dali lang ni oh, you can do this. You don't need a statistician for this chart. <laughs> you don't need a statistician for this. Let's um after the ANOVA, isunod natin si Pearson R kasi may mga Pearson R pala. Anything else? Yung mga nag-pilot testing, okay na tayo ha? Um, ano yan siya ginagawa yung pilot testing sa mga gumagawa ng sariling questionnaire. So, i-pilot testing mo muna yung, ano, ibigay mo muna sa mga selected na respondents yung, yung questionnaire, ipa-test ipa mo yun sa kanila. Ay, ipa-answer pala. Tapos, yung reliability testing sa statistics, yung Cronbox Alpha yung tinitingnan natin. Uh, the higher the Cronbox Alpha, the more it approaches to one, Uh, the reliable your questionnaire is. Pero pag less than 0.5 kasi yung Cronbox Alpha, doon tayo may problema. You need to like revise your questionnaire if that is the case. Hi. Na ay ano, na ay contact ang school sa Rotabap pero 2 to 3 weeks pa daw mo abot tabang mga langit. 